talk about selection methods. When we do selections, there's lots of options that we have. Um, we can simply select by attributes, by locations, by graphics. Um, we can do interactive selections, uh, where we create new selections, add to selections, remove from selections, or select from current selections. Uh, lots of different types of things and ways to make various selections. One of the most common or most often used is a simple boiling two-step. And what this does is you select one step and then you select the next step and you do it in a sequence of individual steps as opposed to trying to establish and develop really complicated lengthy SQL expressions to uh, extract a specific set of data. And while possible it takes a lot of work whereas uh, very simple linear thinking um, where you do this and then this and then this is actually oftentimes much faster. <clears throat> now uh, as you think of these different selections and how you could use them um, create new selections, uh, add to current selections. You can make various changes. You can remove things. You can add stuff in. You can select from things that you've already did stuff to. Tons of options. The big thing to remember is when you're doing <clears throat> some of these uh, selection processes, there's a tiny little drop down here at the top where it usually says things like create a new selection. And that's the default that you're probably going to use most all of the time. But on those instances where you have done something else or where you need to do something else, don't let that um, sit there and fester in the wrong uh, context in, because you won't be selecting the way you think you're selecting. And then you, that means you won't select the things that you want. <clears throat> so you need to follow um, attentively when you're doing the tutorials. And Price will show you the uh, extent of how these various um, options make uh, great differences in terms of the output. And then hopefully when it comes time to do this in person, you won't make those kind of mistakes. Let's look at combining queries. All right, we've got a FEMA problem. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to distribute funding uh, to earthquake-prone cities with large populations. And so... We need to do both a spatial, we have both a spatial condition and an attribute condition. And they have to be performed in sequence, although the order doesn't specifically matter. We're looking for cities that are within 50 miles of earthquakes with populations greater than um, 500,000. So this is an and operation. We're looking for places that meet both criteria. <coughs> so the first step is to do a spatial query and select by locations is a pretty straightforward tool um, in the selection method there's a lot of options but we're going to select features from and then select the layer that we're looking for which is cities and our other thing is the source layer that's the thing that we're looking at to make the selection and that's our earthquakes our quakes layer and our selection method are within a distance of a source layer feature. Again, lots of options on that drop down to pick. You pick the one that, that you need for the thing that you're trying to do. In this case, we're trying to find cities within 50 miles of an earthquake. So what do we do? We look at cities, compare it to an earthquakes layer. We uh, select a spatial sort of uh, identifying thing there for selection of uh, target features within a distance of. And then we apply the distance we want, we click OK, and kaboom, we now identify all those cities that are within that distance. And that's halfway through answering our question. <clears throat> the next step, we can go back to select by attributes and we can do something a little differently. Here we've changed the method to select from the current selection. So it doesn't fall back to all the data, it just takes the cities that we've previously selected. And what we're going to do, we're going to look at the population and we're going to say we want only the ones that are greater than 500,000 people. And so what that's going to then do is generate a new map where we see the uh, 
cities that are within 50 miles of an earthquake with over a half a million people. And that's the bottom data set. And so um, that is essentially how this uh, whole process works.